Many years ago, we had the Rumble in the Jungle. On this snowy December evening, we have Rumble on the River, the Mississippi River. And that's because we're at Minnehaha Academy, the Bergstrom Court, as Big Nation presents the Rumble on the River Invitational. Coming up, a high-powered girls basketball game with two teams quite familiar with this part of town. The St. Louis Park Orioles at 3-2, and two, and the Coma Park Cougars undefeated at 3-0. Hello, everyone. I'm Mike Peden, joined by Alex Nagel. And Alex, uh, you and I, we've covered our share of basketball games. But for these two teams, it's almost like we're first-timers, and that's because for Como Park, their entire senior class is now playing college ball, including Ronnie Porter, who's at Wisconsin. So you have a lot of new faces who haven't been tested yet. St. Louis Park, the toughest team on their schedule thus far. What do you think that can offer for a Como Park team that is still learning to integrate the new pieces? Well, that's that's a very interesting proposition that you put forth here, Mike, because there's a lot of unproven pieces on this Como Park team that we have yet to see play, and we really don't know what to expect yet. On top of that, Alex, Como hasn't played in two weeks. They had a game scheduled with Delano on Thursday. That got rescheduled due to poor weather conditions so I imagine Como's had some practice sessions in but when you haven't played in two weeks Alex how can that impact the flow? Well obviously when you have that kind of a time gap in between games that's a big factor Mike so it's going to be really interesting to see today how Como Park reacts to that that time lapse in, in between games and how they come out here in the first few minutes of this contest. There are some players to keep an eye on, though. Most of them played reserve minutes last year. Shania nichols Vanette back from injury, sidelined for a couple of years. Kayla James, the younger sister of Jada, playing well. And John A. Singer, the strongest interior presence for the team. John A. has had 10 rebounds or more in every game this season, but she is going to get a challenge in St. Louis Park's versatile utility player in Chantel Harden. Harden going to MSU Mankato. Two 30-point games, 12 rebounds or more in every game, Alex. Those are some pretty lofty numbers. Harden in the top 10 in scoring. She is taking that leadership role by the horns. Well, and that's really good for St. Louis Park. They need a leadership from somebody like that. And given the fact that they took Minnetonka right to the wire, uh, this is a St. Louis Park team, Mike, that could very well be on its way up. And it's still very early in the season, so I'm re really anxious to see what this Oriole team does today. Evie Schmidt's another player to keep an eye on. St. Louis Park, they will be an underdog in Section 6-4A, but with a close battle with Minnetonka and a win over Edina, St. Louis Park positioning themselves as a sleeper team. We'll be back for this Rumble on the River when we return. You're watching High School Girls Basketball. Twin City Sports Broadcasting, and a whole lot more. That's what you get from TSB Television. We provide long-lasting digital coverage of your favorite athletes from the preps to the pros. Dazzling moves. Holloman, good if it goes. Yes! Game winners. James. She's in trouble. Finds James. Toss shot! It goes in! And everything in between. Before we let you go, do you want to say hi to anybody? Oh, Oh, I don't know. It put me on the spot there. If you want to connect with our audience, visit us at patreon.com slash TSB television or sponsor our coverage through PayPal and Cash App. Thank you for watching. Welcome to the Bergstrom Court. Mike Peden and Alex Nagel with you. Alex, a lot of big names have come through here at Minnehaha Academy. This site of course, hosting some ESPN games back in the day. Yep. Today, we're going to get two teams who are quite familiar with this facility, Como Park and Minnehaha, and St. Louis Park and Minnehaha. Both have annual series. Yep. You know, it's going to be interesting, too, Mike, to see how these two teams play on a neutral court. You know, when you have this kind of arrangement, it's, it's a little different, but it's going to be interesting to see how these two teams react to that. Both teams how are accustomed to playing at neutral facilities, though. Both St. Louis Park and Como play in the Thanksgiving Invitationals. Yeah. We'll get names and numbers as we move along. No 
pleasantries with the lineups today, so we go right to it. And Chania Nichols Vanette, not wasting any time, misses the three ball. Jordan McMahon with the rebound. There's Kia Hagdahl, she is a perimeter threat, but instead she goes high low to Ruby Massey. And at least one person is happy about that. Again, Como Park, almost a brand new team. Several of these athletes played reserve minutes last year. Jeanne Singer, she made quite the impression last season. Well, and I think that's gonna be key for Como Park, getting that ball inside. And here's someone who's been feeling it all season long. Chantel Harden drops the three. Singer who had the step, but couldn't hang on to it. It's early. Alex Chantel, what a tremendous amount of growth she has taken up. Yeah. Last year, she was a little more apprehensive, admittedly, yeah. because she had Salam Maher as a teammate. But over time, she found the initiative, ended with 18 double-doubles last year. Shania Nichols Van Nett, how about her resilience? Missed two seasons due to injury. But basketball, a huge part of her family. You may remember Michaela Van Nett, who scored over 2,000 points. Boy, what a great player she was. And there's a younger one in Elena. So it's Shania Nichols Van Nett to the line. Shania had 33 points, Alex, against Creighton Durham Hall. She made 11 of 20 from the floor. And she knocks down both free throws here. Shania Nichols averaging 20.7 a game. Massey, three is offline. Nichols Van Nett picks up the rebound. Greta Seppinen almost lost it. Como Park recovers. Fake, tough runner. Zane Singer missed it down low, but a dead ball rebound to the Cougars. And that is Josh Thurow, the athletic director for Minnehaha yep. Academy, but Had knows, a pretty knows. successful career here at Minnehaha. All right, won a state title himself back in 2010. Singer missed the inbound feed. I was going to say, uh, Josh, no stranger to officiating either. He was, <laughs> I'll explain in a moment. As Singer picks up the loose ball, Josh was part of the replacement referee crew. If you remember all yep. those years ago, when they had replacement referees for three games, and then you had the Packers Seahawks debacle, and but Josh wasn't a part of that. Double dribble call on Alice Wagner Hempstead, and Josh, when he was coaching, would only officiate boys' games to prevent a conflict of interest, but since he no longer is coaching, Matt Pryor took over his role for Minnehaha Academy. He can officiate both boys' and girls' games again. Hagdahl, bullseye. Yeah. Alex, that has been a bread and butter play of hers in AAU and at St. Louis Park. Well, I, I tell you why, probably another reason, Mike, why this St. Louis Park team is slowly moving its way up. The big question for them, as we've got a high-low play, and Alice Wagner Hempstad, I'm gonna use a line that would irritate Tony, but it fits there. <laughs> she should open a bakery, you wanna know why? Yes. Why? It was a sweet roll. Okay. <laughs> Tony would refer to that as a bakery shop yes, for that reason. Yes, Our old yes, friend Tony Gear. Yes, yes. Here's Evie Schmitz. Tries to penetrate her way inside. Came up strong on the attempt. Nichols Vanette. Three on the way. Off the heel. That was Wagner Hempstead. Elena Vanette tried to 
time the pass didn't quite work out. Like you said, Alex, a neutral court is an interesting twist, but for these two, they both have played here. Now, Como, yeah. it's been a couple of years at St. Louis Park, and Minnehaha have an annual series owing to their geographic proximity. Right. So they're pretty familiar with this facility. Harden steps into the three. Not that time. Como looking to run it. Pass broken up. Great recognition there by Van Nett with that pass. Just had to try to thread the needle there through, through a pretty tight window. It will stay with Como. Hagdahl couldn't get a firm grip on the ball. And St. Louis Park on the way up, but the big question for them, can they work their way? Oh, Kia Hagdahl. Something goes up with her earring, it looks like. Oh, she forgot to take them off. Huh. Okay. Well, you know, Alex, well, maybe not from directly from experience, but sometimes you get caught up in the pregame rituals so much that you forget, forget. to remove your jewelry. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's what it was because I thought I heard her make some sort of exclamation like, oh, crap. Yeah. <laughs> For the lack of a better term, perhaps. Uh, I think the word she actually said is probably not something I should say on air. Even the word I just used, I just realized, oh, no. I could be in trouble now. Yeah. These kids are probably too young to remember it, but as long as you avoid those right. seven dirty words, right. you should be you all should right. Be okay. You should be okay. <laughs> I never thought we'd have that conversation in a broadcast. Somebody should have told me that when I was playing tennis in the juniors. Kia Hagdahl lines up the throw. Well, you know what? You and John McEnroe had something in common, though. Hagdahl with the steal. Well, I tell you what, shoot two. pretty nice reaction after that missed three. Came back and made the defensive play there at the midcourt area, and now has a chance to uh, cash in here at the charity stripe. Uh, Kia Hagdahl has played basketball for a long time, but up until middle school, she also competed in gymnastics. Hagdahl on the season. Averaging just under 10 points per game. And she makes both free throws. It's 10-6 with 13.06 left in the first half. No shot clock today. Nichols Vanette tried to use the pivot, but her jumper was short. Harden with the rebound. Three on the way. Rims out. Another three. Alex, the threes are finding their spots, but they're just rattling out. Well, you know, I think when they start relying on the perimeter shooting, they, they're taking away from their strength. Well, Harden's got plenty of strengths. Lost it, though, on the dribble drive. Jump ball. Orioles with the arrow. Now for St. Louis Park. The big question for them how will they hold up against the likes of Wyzetta and Hopkins right. who are in the yeah, section? Exactly. I had Chantel Harden on my podcast, and she talked about how sometimes her Orioles teams would get intimidated by that and almost played themselves into defeat. Alice Wagner Hemstad read the passing lane. She'll pull up from 15. No good. Ruby Massey with the rebound.
side out for St. Louis Park. As the foul was called on Shania Nichols Vanette. Como Park, their section, I thought it was going to be a tough out, but as of now, they might find their way back in the state. De La Salle having to do a significant makeover themselves, having off to a slow start. Massey missing the layup. And Visitation, they're five and three. They've got a win over St. Croix Lutheran. Singer almost lost it, but Shania Nichols Vanette tracked it down. Three is short. Kayla James will give it a try. Off the heel. Macy Alexander, Harden for three. Boom. Got it. Well, Como Park going through a bit of a dry spell here. Time for them to get reorganized. Harden with a pair of triples. Again, her stat line this season has been insane. 12 rebounds or more in every game, two 30-point games, and in the top 10 in the state in scoring. That's pretty good. She did have some Division I looks, but they weren't to her liking, and so yeah. she decided to go the D2 route and play for one of the top D2 programs in the country in MSU Mankato. Yeah, and they're, I believe, uh, ranked number four right now in D2. And, well, and they have another notable standout in Hannah Herzig yep. from Tino Grace, the Class 3A state champions last year. Yep. Janae Morton, the Osseo yep, and sure. yep. Nebraska graduate, part yep. of the coaching staff there. And MSU Mankato, well, they'll pay a visit December 31st, and that will feature a showdown of former high school teammates because Leah Dangarud is at Concordia. Yeah. That should be a fun one. But Chantel Harden has really made a name for herself. She started her varsity career at Burnsville. Hold up. And another clock problem here? What's Not a one? clock problem. They had to update the scoreboard, but they have uh, the score incorrect or they have the score right but the names are inverted ah yes i was just gonna say you know i noticed that and i didn't know if that was an accident or not but it looks like we have that particular uh, problem fixed now or right, it will get there 11 20 left in the first half i think now now we're getting it straightened out because yeah i thought it's 13 6 13 6 yeah i thought we had things a little brass backwards so Well, you do this long enough, eventually you're not going to know the difference between up and down anymore. <laughs> so I think we're good to go now. Well, and you know what? And we see a 2-3 zone now. I've seen defense some. Defense for uh, St. Louis Park. Yeah, they're zoning up. Interesting formation here. We'll see if Como can get out of it. Well, they had the right idea, but that's well, the second pass. Singer is bobble. You know, given the uh, struggles that Como has had from behind the arc here over the last few minutes, it's probably a smart move. Elbow J. Off the glass. Jordan McMahon gets on the board, and the Orioles with a 15-6 lead. Foul is called on Ruby Massey. Harden will go back in after taking a quick breather. Singer fields the pass this time. Tried to bounce it over to James, but didn't have a clear lane. Eggdahl with the steal. Harden, look out. Got wow. it. Three triples for Chantel Harden, and the Orioles up 18-6. to six. Well, I tell you what, Harding is feeling it right now. A pretty critical possession for Como Park right here. Kayla James left alone, drains the long deuce.
Here she goes again. Bit of a heat check, doesn't go in. Harden already with 27 triples. There's Jeanne Singer who gets the friendly bounce. So Como scoring on back-to-back -back possessions. It's 18 to 10. Nice little response here from Como Park, getting that deficit back into, into single digits. Ooh. Oh, nice read by St. Louis Park, but Macy Alexander missed the bunny. Singer bustles her way inside. And Alex Como has scored on three straight possessions. Yes. Well, and you know, you notice how they started going inside again. Harden for three. Another stop for the Cougars. St. Louis Park might use a timeout here if Como scores again. Singer with a step back, Jay. Off the mark and a foul. On Wagner Hempstead. Hagdahl having a word with Josh Thurow. Looks to be a pleasant one, though. They're both having a couple of smiles about it. <laughs> Big day of high school hoops. Hopkins and Eastridge finishing up their game. Harden. Como not taking any chances now. They get the steal. Nichols Vanette for three. That rattles out. Schmitz is hacked, she'll shoot two. Good job though, getting into traffic and drawing the foul. Schmitz averaging 16 and a half points per game this season. Five assists per game to boot. Season high 22 against Robbinsdale Cooper. Yeah. She has to settle for a split there though. 19 to 12. Nichols Vanette, shovel pass. Jordan McMahon was on top of it. Well, I tell you what, that was some great defensive play down there by McMahon. Schmitz. Hell ball, Amani Crump got in there for the grab. Amani Crump, by the way, the younger sister of Ronnie Porter. Logged a few minutes last year, and I've seen her play a couple of times at the Triple Threat Showcase event. It's an exhibition, but yeah. Amani, usually one of the standout performers. And Como going deep into their bench. Shania Nichols Vanette goes off the glass for her first field goal. And Alex, this lead is down to five. Well, I tell you what, a great response here by Como Park when they got down double digits. Things were not looking good. Harden wins the scrum, but can't corral it cleanly. They catch a break, though, with the tie-up. Oh, great defensive play by Van Nett. Nichols Van Nett can't go coast to coast, but Amadi Crump lunged up for the O board. Harden gets the rebound. Orioles with a chance to score on the move. Hagdahl. Are they going to give continuation? They are. Yes. Hagdahl up to seven. Now 
averaging about nine and a half points per game. And she completes a three point play. That puts her up to eight. Hagdahl was looking for the steal. Over pursued there. Como now trying to switch. Nichols Van Eck, three from the corner, is short. Nichols Van Eck collects the rebound. But she's hounded, but hounded but pushed by Stacy Spates. Six thirty-five left in the first half. Eight-point game. Bounce pass into Sahara Hinton, and she's fouled. Hinton. Limited action as far as the stat sheet is concerned. Alanda England in her third season at Como Park last year took the team to their first ever bronze medal in the Class 3A state tournament. They lost to Totino Grace in the semifinals as the Eagles pulled off that surprising bid. Hagdahl fouled before the shot, one and one here. St. Louis Park, four or five at the line. And that does put St. Louis Park into the bonus now. Well, St. Louis Park, four or five at the line. Hagdahl has made all three thus far. And Shania Nichols Vanette will head to the bench for a minute. And Kia Hagdahl stepping in after the early blitzkrieg from Chantel Harden. Lead back up to nine now at 24-15. And Hagdahl a perfect five of five from the line. Hinton, step back. Singer, rebound, uh, and a traveling call. Good break there for the Cougars and for that missed bunny. And I feel, Alex, if Singer, she's getting some solid positioning down low, yeah. if she can get a little more consistency with the finish, yeah. she could rack up points in a hurry and give pause to St. Louis Park. Five fifty nine left, St. Louis Park leads twenty four fifteen. Another substitution. Seppin and going in for Amani Crump. Harden with the bump. And she's gonna get hit with a foul. The last to give for the Orioles with five fifty five left in the first half. Another foul on Harden. Well, smart play by Van Nett there. Getting the Cougars into the bonus now. And it's a shooting foul, so two free throws here for Shania Nichols Van Nett. And Harden's going to have to come out for a little bit. No? Okay, no, they're going to keep her in. Shania's nickname, by the way, is Chinky. Oh. I have no idea what that means. Yeah. 
But I can tell you, she is perfect from the line so far. Here's a three from St. Louis Park offline. Harden with the reverse. So we're going to get a sense of Harden's intellect playing with two fouls here. You certainly don't want to pick up a third. Whoop. Little miscommunication there. And the Orioles force the turnover. Entry feed for Harden. Yes. Well, just like that, that lead back up to double digits again here at 28 to 17. So ju just under five minutes left. This is where Como's got to go back to work on the offensive end. And just like that, Harden is up to 13 points. And again, Singer having a hard time fielding passes in his first half. Now that time, I'm not sure she was quite set in her position, yeah. but she's bobbled a couple of passes already. I know she was a latecomer to the game of basketball. Hagdahl, oh boy. Way downtown. Oh. Pure! Wow. That was Caitlin Clark range. Yeah, I was just going to say. Como with the timeout, St. Louis Park. They lead by two touchdowns. Which for the Minnesota Vikings wasn't that big of a deficit. No, uh, I <laughs> thought 28 to three was the danger lead to have. Apparently not anymore. Now it's 33 nothing. Yeah, that was uh, largest comeback. That was, that was pretty hopeless. Well, it, it was pretty hopeless. It, well, I guess we can't say hopeless anymore. No. Well, Arsenio Richardson imploring his team to get after it. I'm a little surprised by that tone. Of course, coaches, you know, they're always looking for advantages. Oh, sure, sure. Well, and, and, you know, I, I think when, when you get a league, when you a lead like this, when you, you get some momentum, you don't want to lay back. You don't want to give it away. Right. You don't want to lay back and just right. coast. Play not to lose, as right. the saying goes. Right. I know it's still early, 4.30 to go in the first half, but Alex Hagdahl already with 13 points. Harden with 13 points. The two are playing as advertised. Now they bring the pressure. Como able to get it across the timeline. And Elena Van Nett sinks the long two. Well, I tell you what, the Cougars needed that one badly. Let's see if it can spark a bit of an offensive run here for Como Park. Now they need to get the job done on the, on the defensive end here. Hagdahl again. Long, hard in, tough angle there. And rebound by Singer. Again, Harden has to be careful. Harden she's had got, a shot at that. She did, but she's got to be mindful. She has two fouls. You don't want a third before the half. Harden collects the outlet. Has a wide open lane and leaves it short. Wow. Maybe it was too easy. I've seen a lot of that in the early part of the season. That's a walk. I've seen a, more of those missed layups on the fast break than I would like to see. You know, I have I saw some last night too, so it's, it's not just limited to this contest. You see a lot of it. I find that a little surprising. I know it's early, but in the AAU season, usually when you get open lanes like that, you're money. St. Louis Park, money from three-point range. Well, you know, Mike, you talked about it, the top, about how that layoff between games for the Orioles, we wondered the Cougars, how that was you mean. going to affect them. The we Cougars, you mean? That's St. Louis Park, they played earlier this week. Como, oh, they, they've been oh, off for Como. two weeks. I'm sorry. And that ball went off of the support strap, so it's a dead ball rebound. Now, St. Louis Park, they played on Tuesday, got that win over Edina. That was a good win for them. Well, and the two games they lost, Minnetonka, that was a two-point game. It, yeah. was, it went to overtime. Robbinsdale Cooper 
another game that I think went to overtime. So St. Louis Park, they're not getting blown out by anybody. And we're going to have free throws here. Macy Alexander to the line for a one and one. Now again, can St. Louis Park take on the likes of Hopkins and Wyzetta? That's yeah. a tall order. Yeah. I'm not saying it can't happen, yeah. but That's... Hopkins and Wyzetta are still pretty loaded. But this is encouraging. St. Louis oh, Park, absolutely. they've had some talented players over the years, but they consistently get overshadowed because they share the same section with yeah. Hopkins and Wyzetta. You, know, you talk about some of the great players. I think about somebody like Allie Johnson who played at St. Louis Park and later had a great career at St. Thomas. Kendall Coley played there before graduating early to join Nebraska. Salam Maher played her senior year there, led the team in scoring. Now playing at Smith College. Reagan Alexander was another one. Yep. And Shania Nichols Vanette is perfect at the line. Six of six. We'll take that. And more free throws coming. Jordan McMahon draws the shooting foul. And looking ahead for St. Louis Park, they do get Hopkins January 4th. They will also play Eden Prairie at the Park Center Holiday Invite. They're back here on Tuesday, actually, to play yeah. Minnehaha Academy, part of that annual series. Okay. And they also go on the road to play Shakopee. In the Metro West, they're going to have some tough competition from Chaska and Benilde St. Margaret's. Yeah. Although Chaska, I didn't <laughs> see that result coming. Tessa Johnson, 51, 51 points. 51 points, that's just unreal. Nine triples, and St. Michael Aberville nearly hit 100. Nichols Vanette drains the triple. Well, I think if you're Como Park right now, with just under two minutes left, you want to see if you can get this deficit back to within single digits again. You had it down to as low as six points. That could There's help. Another chance. Singer stayed with McMahon and got the one-handed block. Nichols Vanette shakes off the coverage. Bullseye! Another little spurt here by the Cougars. So they're in a 2-3 zone defense now. And without Harden, she is waiting to check back in. Here comes a three from Schmitz. Off the heel. Rebound. One by the Cougars. A good hustle play from James. Now Vanette pulls up from 15. Goodness. Swish. Just like that, back down to six points again. An eight-point burst from Shania Nichols Vanette. 45 seconds left in the half, 35-29. Pump fake, no good. Big chance now, for the Cougars. If I were St. Uh, Paul Como Park, I would want to hold for one shot here. We'll see. Nichols Vanette feeling it. Well, she'll get free throws out of it. You know what, Alex? I, I don't protest that move. Yes, you, know, you may give St. Louis Park the last yeah. shot, but Como, they had a lot of rhythm. Right. Momentum was on their side with right. Nichols Vanette. Why not go for it? You've got plenty of time. Maybe I should listen to you more often. <laughs> well, remember, I was the one. I underestimated Roseville, for example, right. last year at State, and, and uh, that didn't age well. Well, you and I, that, that, there's no right answer. There's no right or wrong answer. But Shania Nichols Vanette, she is absolutely right from the free throw line. Eight of eight. Three ball. Oh, and this could we, work out. Now here's, oh. I think, where you want to, want to settle for the last shot. Yeah, just, under, just over 10 seconds here. Yeah, if they got St. Louis Park to one and done, they could make this a one possession game. Nichols Vanette finds Singer down low. Look at that. Look at that! Oh. 
By my count, a 12-0 run to end the half. Shania Nichols Van Nett with 10 of those points and the assist to Singer. It's 35-33. Como well, with all the momentum right now. Considering the spot that the Cougars were in not too terribly long ago, uh, this is nothing short of amazing. What a great response after things were not looking very good at all for them. Hey, if the Vikings can come back from 33 points down, 14 points is nothing. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you never say die until the clock reads zero. We'll take a break and collect ourselves. We'll see who comes out on top in the second half. This is the Rumble on the River at Minnehaha Academy. St. Louis Park leads Coma Park 35-33. Twin City Sports Broadcasting, and a whole lot more. That's what you get from TSB Television. We provide long-lasting digital coverage of your favorite athletes from the preps to the pros. Dazzling moves. Holloman, good if it goes. Yes! Game winners. James. She's in trouble. Finds James. Toss shot! It goes in! And everything in between. Before we let you go, do you want to say hi to anybody? Oh. Oh, I don't know. It put me on the spot there. If you want to connect with our audience, visit us at patreon.com slash TSB television or sponsor our coverage through PayPal and Cash App. Thank you for watching. Welcome back to the Bergstrom Court on the campus of Minnehaha Academy for the Rumble on the River. Presented by Big Nation. Mike Beat and Alex Nagel with you, and Alex Como Park with a furious storm to end the first half. A 14-0 run, or 12-0 run, I should say. It's 35-33. That's going to change everything. Oh, absolutely. You know, this game has already had some unusual momentum swings. You know, we saw St. Louis Park, you know, take the uh, seemingly take charge uh, for a good chunk of this first half. We saw Como come back and get it down to like what five six points and then St. Louis Park again started to take control of things had a double digit lead and then like you said this unforeseen 12-0 comeback has really changed uh, the whole the whole dynamics of this contest Mike so it's going to be really interesting to see now you know how St. Louis Park reacts uh, after having that double digit lead slip away uh, you know, I think they're going to have to make some adjustments on defense. Whether they stick with that 2-3 zone or not remains to be seen. Back to action in the second half. Here's Jeanne Singer staying on her pivot. But a tough angle there. Leaders in the first half, Shania Nichols Van Ed had 18 points. Kia Hagdahl oh. had 13, and she adds three more from the well, corner. I, I tell you what, that's a great response by St. Louis Park coming out of the gate here in this second half. They needed a spark, something. Kick ball, what happened there? Como with the arrow on the tie up. I was going to say, Harden and Hagdahl both had 13 points in the first half. John A. Singer with eight. It was Como riding the wave of momentum to end the first half. St. Louis Park ball, not Como. The possession arrow was corrected. Harden will reset. And anytime she touches the ball, there's a sense of anticipation. Tough shot through traffic, but she puts uh, back her own miss. Great offensive rebound by Harding getting that. Those second sh chance points like that are, play a huge role in a game like this. Mikayla Kenny is taking the floor. Well, Alex Como Park finds themselves in another critical juncture here. I know it's early in the second half. Shania Nichols Vanette, three is short. Rebound 
off of James. Dead ball. Orioles. Well, and undoubtedly, this is not the part, the uh, kind of start that Como wanted to have coming out here in the second half. He worked so hard to get back to within a single possession, which was unforeseen in the first place. And you had a chance right off the bat to get the contest knotted. Now you're suddenly down by seven. So this is going to be a huge uh, defensive possession now for Como to get a stop here. Another deep three from Hagdahl. Wow. Close. Well, and again, there you go, those second chance points. McMahon cleaning up that mess, and St. Louis Park on a 7-0 run to start the second half. And you have to remember, Alex, everyone you see on the floor for Como Park either did not play or saw limited minutes. So they don't have as much experience in these ebbs and flows the way the senior yeah. class from last year did that yep. had Jada James, Chloe Dimitrik, yep. KK Asbury, and Ronnie Porter. Asbury and Porter both D1 commits. Here's another three from the Orioles, and wow. it's good. Yep. Evie Schmitz with the first field goal. And just like that, back up to 12. The yo-yo continues. High-low for Singer. She was bumped by McMahon. You have to wonder now if, I mean, obviously it's still very early here in the second half, but you have to wonder if Como can find another run to get this one manageable and again get back to within striking distance. Shania Nichols Van Nett has the stroke to do it. Oh, absolutely. We saw that at the end of the first half, scoring 10 points in a hurry. Eyeing the three there through traffic. Kayla James, no good. Hagdahl steps into the three, short. Coma with numbers. Boy, that's, Kayla, that's the kind of opportunity you got to cash in on if you're Como. Absolutely. Kayla James had a great setup by Nichols Van Nett. This isn't the first wild swing I've seen today. No, not me, me either. <laughs> <laughs> right. Hagdahl short on the take. In my case, I covered the Holy Angels Benilde St. Margaret's game. Here's a three ball from Como that's off. Holy Angels led 10-2 early and then Benilde St. Margaret's took off running. Harden with the dime. Massey with the finish. Good to see a 30 second timeout here. We are getting one. A 12-0 run from the Orioles to respond to Como's 12-0 run to end the first half. Yeah, just some very unusual momentum swings in this contest. And uh, you know, if you're Como, you're right back at the drawing board again. And now you gotta find, you gotta be able to dig down deep and find that spark, find that will to battle yourselves, get back into this contest. Well, in the other game, again, Holy Angels had the early lead. It looked like they were going to pick up another big win against Benilde St. Margaret's. And then the Red Knights went on a 13-0 run, didn't look back. They won at 88-75. They were up by 21, 22 points at one point. Here, St. Louis Park has gone up big. Como Park reeled them in. Now St. Louis Park throwing the latest haymaker. And the Cougars have yet to score in the second half. I will say, between the two crowds, uh, this one a little more festive. I've seen uh, a good deal of ugly Christmas sweaters, yeah. including my own. <laughs> I don't feel so isolated here. And there's another. Harden got the deflection. I'll tell you what, that might have been a bailout because I thought Alice Wagner Henstab was a little out of control. Yeah, I thought she was too. I mean, she was in considerable traffic when she put that shot attempt up, but she got away with it. And a chance now to uh, finally get the cobwebs off of the uh, Cougar basket here in the second half. She'll have to settle for a split. 
Harden. And happy feet on the part of Alexander. Singer, the skip. Elena Vanette, the runner, looked a little off from the point of release. Loose ball, Harden scoops it up. She'll get it past the timeline. She's got numbers. She sees a lane and goes all the way. That was just smooth by Harden. Chantel Harden, I ran into her old teammate, Salam Maher. She was one of those players that would get on Chantel Harden and say, you gotta score more often. You gotta be more aggressive. And another missed opportunity for the Cougars on that possession. Singer had a couple of looks down low. Harden with the bounce pass. Alexander, though, nowhere to go. Wagner Hempstad with the strip. The kick out. Three. Bullseye. Well, if you're going to get back into this contest, that's one way to do it. Elena Van Nett sinks the triple. 12-25 and counting. Ooh, there is a... Harden... Wanted a moving screen on that one. Instead, Singer connects with Nichols Vanette on the outlet. And the senior converts. Back to back scores for the Cougars. And then a five second call. Stacy Spates looked a little lost there, trying to find an inbound target. Well, I. Alex, do I dare say we are having another yo-yo here? Quite possibly, at least a, a bit of a momentum swing anyway. Still at 10 points, but a chance here for Como to make some more noise. And there's a mistake. Again, it's still, there's still a ton of time left here, Mike. So if, if you're Como and you're down 10, you want this is, are situations where you really want to double down on the defensive end. And then Hagdahl is fouled. And it's on Wagner Hemstad. By the way, I've got a fun fact about Alice Wagner Hemstad when we get a moment. Last touch by the Cougars. Singer is saying, how is that off of us? Or something to that extent. Alexander. Wow. Foul by Singer. Well, I did see the arm come down there. Certainly not intentional, but I did see the arm yeah. come down and hit Alexander. Right. That, that's a foul. Right. I can agree with that one. That looked like a foul to me. So Alexander to the line. She has yet to score. Makes up for that. Just a split there, so not the worst possession for the Cougars. Elena Vanette steps into the three, can't bank it in. Hagdahl. Oh. Beat Elena, but John A. Singer swooped in in time. She said, I don't think so. Well, and again, Singer was a latecomer into the sport of basketball compared to some of her classmates, so maybe some of the mechanics and intangibles aren't as polished as someone like Ronnie Porter. Right. But she is an axe factor.
Harden steps into the three. Ooh. Offensive rebound, now Harden pulls up from 13. Well, again, another example of those second chance points that's really helping St. Louis Park. Long two. Singer, amidst the trees, comes up with it and puts it back in. And that's what I'm talking about. If Singer can finish like that, Como yeah. Park could gain an edge inside. But Singer does have 10 points. She left her coverage behind. Yeah, that was, came over too late. Easy pickings for Ruby Massey. Timeout, St. Louis Park, but they do lead 13, 54, 41, 10, 27 to go. Ruby Massey doesn't score a lot, just 4.4 points per game. And a big difference, at least offensively, Alex, St. Louis Park, you're getting beat performances out of Harden and Hagdahl. Yeah. Como Park, Singer has chipped in a few points, but Shania nichols Van Nett kind of by herself with 20. Yeah. Now, Como, their schedule not as fierce as last season when they played four late conference teams. They will get YZ in mid-January, and Benilde St. Margaret's, that's going to be a huge barometer game. Yeah. January 3rd. And then they come back here on Valentine's Day to play Minnehaha Academy. So okay. I guess I don't know what led to these two accepting this invitational, but like I said, these two schools are no stranger to this facility. Yeah. Having played here several times over the years. Pardon? And McMahon doubled up on Singer. That led to the steal. Hagdahl lost her balance. McMahon, yes, that was a walk. And Hagdahl slow to get up. Looks like she's okay. Oh. One of the team managers, I think, is getting videos, says she's all right. I think Hagdahl maybe got tweaked a little bit, so she'll step out as a precaution. High entry pass. Singer near the high post. Whoa! That's a three for Wagner Hemstad, who also plays piano. But Alex, I think Como got away with one there. Yeah, maybe. That, that was. Uh... I think you could have had a case for traveling. And we see Como turning up the heat again on defense, like they did in that little run right before the first half. Let's see if this. That could be the spark for another Cougar push here, Mike. They've done it before. It can expend some energy, but that young woman right there, Shania Nichols Vanette, can spark another comeback. There she is with the three. Not that time. Spates with the board. Finds Harden. Side fade. Bullseye. Oh. And again, one of the big time scores from last year, Salam Maher was saying, I was getting on Chantel to embrace her strengths. And Como Park doing that with Shania Nichols Van Nett, the three from the key, gives her 23. Well, if you're Como, that's great that you're getting an opportunity to get a three like that, but this is not where you want to be trading scores. Chantel Harden banks it off the glass. Great use of the pivot. And Harden with 24. The funny thing about Harden, well, hang on, Singer lost it. Tie up, come on with the arrow. An amusing note about Harden, I had her on my podcast 
And one of the stories she said was all the flack she got jokingly about not being able to get to 30 points. She was a double-double machine and still yeah. is. Yeah. But she would get 28 or 29, and that would be it. And so they would tease her about being afraid of hitting 30. Well, she's done that twice already in the early part of the season. She gets the rebound there. She caught my attention last year being a strong interior force for her AAU team right now. Jordan McMahon will shoot free throws here. This is the one girls game on the invitational schedule. There are a couple of boys games taking place later today. And Como will bring in some subs, Sahara Hinton and Amani Crump. Hinton. Como having some difficulty here holding on to it. St. Louis Park gets the timeout call in, 7.28 to go. Camera down. You okay? All right. Okay. All right, looks like the iPad is still in one piece. 60-47. And Alex, the big names are stepping up in a big way. Harden with 24 points, Nichols Van Nett with 23. But the Orioles, to me, have looked a little more fluid throughout. Well, the other thing that's standing out to me right now, too, is the rebound in front, particularly which is leading to those second chance point opportunities for the Orioles. Hagdahl off the screen. Shovel pass to McMahon. McMahon with eight, and the Orioles with their largest lead of the game at 15. Nichols Van Ed trying to get herself open off the screen. And there's Entry Harding feed intercepted. Harden pulls up oh. and banks it in again. St. Louis Park doing it all here right now on both ends of the floor. 26 points for Harden. And now a block. Look at this. One on one with Nichols Van Nett. Oh. Spin move and the finish. I tell you what. Singer is fouled. Alex, well, I tell you what, you talk about somebody stepping up, big name stepping up. That young lady has certainly stepped up. And you'll see here at MSU Mankato next year, one of the top D2 programs in the country. Free throws for Jean A. Singer. Also plays volleyball and track. Again, a latecomer, but. has held her own since stepping up to varsity. Missed both free throws. Well, Harden. We'll see if she can get her third 30 point game of the season. She wants it right here on the three, off the heel. But everyone was going inside. Hagdahl, no good. Harden with the well, friendly again. bounce. It's, it's the rebounding those second and third chance point opportunities that we just saw right there. And Chantel Harden, who had never scored a 30-point game in her life, now has three of them this season. And Alex, I think St. Louis Park executing the dagger run. Yeah, they really are. 
Yeah, and you know, I think it's pretty impressive when you think about how they were so severely challenged coming in on this stretch of that first half when they look like they might be in some real trouble. I think this was a pretty solid response in this second half by the Orioles. Right, they only had a two point lead at the half after Como scored 12 in a row. But I think again, the experience playing a big factor in this game. Oh, yeah. And Harden will go to the line. Harding taking over this game now for the Orioles. Well, Chantel, she's had some time to get acclimated to St. Louis Park and got some shining examples of what it takes to be a leader working alongside Salam Maher, who came over from Hopkins. And it was Salam who told Chantel, hey, you're not too bad yourself. Don't be afraid to get after it, embrace yeah. it. And Chantel on a tremendous evolution. In fact, Alex, I remember when I went over to Hamlin, I saw St. Louis Park play a little bit against Madison Memorial. Harden had a big game. John yeah. Herbertsmeyer, the Bethel head coach, came over to me and asked, uh, where is she going to college? And then I said, <laughs> MSU Mankato. And John a. Singer scores the high-low play. And Herbie said, that doesn't surprise me. I thought she was college material. I think he was looking to get her himself if no one else had reached yeah. out. But no, Chantel, she's going to play D2. So her talents are not going unnoticed here. Even if they don't make it to state, being in the same section as two perennials. If you're good enough, people will find you. And Chantel is more than good enough. In fact, Alex, she has 19 second half points. Yeah. Oh, what a nice play by Schmitz. Schmitz with the poke in the strip. Harden for two more. And that ties her season high. Hagdahl going for the steal. That leaves Elena Van Ed open. And that will be a dead ball rebound to St. Louis Park. Alex. Again, St. Louis Park, while they're not expected to be a force in the section, the way they're playing and the way Chantel Harden has anchored this yeah. team, yeah. even if they don't win their section, they could be a spoiler in it. At the very least, they could give some of the top teams a run. Yeah, I, I tell you what. And she wants three more. We'll well, I guess you can't make them but, all. You know, I, I tell you what, when you get to section play, Mike, uh, it sounds like an old cliche, but you don't want to count your chickens too early. You know what I mean? Well, Harden was telling me, I mentioned this in the first half, oftentimes her teammates would get nervous or rattled when they had to play a Hopkins or YZ. Yeah. Doubt would start to creep in, and Chantel's like, well, what? You can't think like that. Even if you don't get the win. Well, like the Minnetonka game, for example, now the skippers are a bit short-handed without Tori McKinney, but St. Louis Park forced them to overtime. Yep. A team that could make it to the 4A field in state. And Chantel, everyone else played their hearts out. That's the attitude you got to bring. Because if you get scared before the game starts, you've already lost. You play right into the hands of the heavyweights. And Chantel Harden with a new career high, and perhaps fittingly on a putback layup. Yep. 36 points, 23 in the second half. Quite, quite a second half for that young lady, I'll tell you what. 36. That's why she's staying in. Well, appreciate the update on that. <laughs> okay, what's your commission rate? Because uh, you gave us that little nugget. I didn't <laughs> find that in my research. Do I owe you anything? I'm <laughs> well, 2.44 left in the way she's been playing. I think, my, well. My, my money is that she'll get it. They're, they're keeping her in. Hagdahl going out, but they're keeping Harden in. I joked with her. 
Because you know me, I root for everybody, and I've forged a lot of friendships. But I teased her. I said, I hope you save a few points for today. She said I would. Uh, she saved more than a few. So apparently, Harden can cross 1,000 with her next point. Free throw or field goal. Well, she's already hit a milestone with a new career high. They're not giving goes. it up. There it is. Well, the celebration has begun. Chantel Harden, welcome to the 1,000 point club. A new career high and 1,000 points. She did it. Congratulations to that young lady. Great player. And you wonder if she had taken this kind of approach earlier on, maybe she'd make a run at 2,000. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. No, I am kidding. I'm kidding. Well, and Harden, a lot of players are like this, Alex, as you know. When you have dynamic playmakers, whether it was Paige Beckers at Hopkins or Taylor Hill at South all those years ago, yeah. sometimes as a teammate, your first instinct is to defer. And I think most basketball players... They're pretty unselfish. They right. don't want to make it about themselves right. or the point total. Right, right. Well, and we saw Kennedy Click in Maple Grove. Got 1,000 earlier this week. Get her 1,000 point I'll here be this seeing her on week. Tuesday yep. against St. Michael Abraville. Yep. Oh, that's going to be a, that is going to be another barometer game. How does Tessa Johnson respond after yep. a 51 point outburst? Yep. Oh. Speaking of scores, that's still mind blowing. Well, Chantel Harden, a new career high, 38 points. And now 1,000 for her career. I did not expect her to be a breakout player this season when I was looking at the list of candidates. Well, what? she wasn't a she wasn't a pushover last year, average to double double. Right. Okay, can't get that one there. But Harden's Ascendance, in a way, reminds me of Andrea Adams at Como yeah, Park. Yeah, no Players sure. who had a lot of talent, but then just found that takeover gene. Speaking of that, Harden got the block, doesn't get the steal, but Harden, I think she found that takeover gene. And not having Salam or her, I think, does put more of an emphasis on that because she can't defer to Salam and let her do the scoring. Right. But Andrea was like that too, where she had some solid years as a yeah. freshman and sophomore at Como Park as a junior. She led the state in scoring. Yep. Right now, Madden Greenway holds that mark as the state leader, but Chantel Harden is creeping up that list. It's well, and we're you know, stat padding time now. You know, you look at players like that, like a, like Harden, like a Kennedy Click. And Andre Adams and, and so many others. You know, they're really rare players because they have that takeover ability. It's 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 not something that's in everybody. The willingness to seize right. The initiative. Right. You not only have to have talent, you have to have something, a special element upstairs that you know, a special kind of confidence, I think, that allows you to have that ability to do that. Like Robin Williams once said in Dead Poet Society, carpe diem, yes. seize, seize the, the day. day. And Harden doing that. Again, Madden Greenway leading the state in scoring. Now that doesn't surprise me, but Harden doing that. Even uh, Aaliyah Crump, which, okay, uh, Crump is one of the top prospects in her class. Right. But I saw her take strides in leadership with AAU and at Minnetonka in the early part of the season. I'll tell you what, though, Alex, St. Louis Park, that conference series with Benilde St. Margaret's is going to be a lot of fun. Yep. And Chaska, I don't know how that's going to go, but I think St. Louis Park, they could be in contention. They did get a split against Benilde St. Margaret's last year. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be a good day for the St. Louis Park schools. Benilde St. Margaret's with the big win over Holy Angels, and now St. Louis Park adds another big win to their resume. As we're playing out the final minutes here, I did want to give a plug to Asia Mohammed. She wanted to introduce herself to me. 
as Nichols Van Nett missed the three. Asia Mohammed apparently is another fan of my basketball coverage. I sometimes forget that the players themselves watch all of these games on YouTube and elsewhere. Yeah. And it just speaks to the impact. Took a double dribble. It speaks to the impact all of us have on these impressionable athletes. Yeah. yeah. And that's why I do my best to set a good example. But the day will belong to Chantel Harden. 38 points, 1,000 for her career. And for the senior headed to MSU Mankato, this is just the beginning. For Coma Park, they made a fight of it, and this will help them grow, but St. Louis Park soaring to a 76-54 win. Alex, this was Chantel Harden's coming out party, if you will. I mean, she already had a couple of 30-point games, but a career-high 1,000. What more can you say? Well, I tell you what, what a great day for her. Uh, no question about it. You know, and again, I thought once the second half got underway, I thought that uh, St. Louis Park was much better on the rebounding front, and that led to those second and third chance points, which proved so critical when they started pulling away. That Harden converted several times in the second half. We'll try to get her up here for a post-game chat before we call it a day. This is the Rumble on the River. St. Louis Park beats Como Park 76-54. And I'm joined by the woman of the hour, Chantel Harden. Christmas comes a little early for the MSU Mankato Bound Senior. Two milestones in one day. A career high 38 points, 1,000 career points. I talked to your old buddy Salama Her, and she was saying everyone thought you were going to cross this mark at Minnehaha. Well, yeah. you did. You come back here Tuesday. Yeah. It just came a game early. But what do you make of one of the brightest days in your playing career? Um, I mean, I just got to thank my team for sure, my coaches. Uh, it was tough. It was a battle tonight. Como came out in the first half, but we just kind of pushed through, and I'm really, like, overwhelmed with joy and stuff to be able to hit those two big milestones and celebrate a win with my team. That was a big turning point in this game. Como ends the first half on a 12 nothing run. It's a two-point game. You get a similar run to start the second half and don't look back. What adjustments did you make with Como? Right behind your uh, right behind your heel. Um, we talked about at halftime just coming out and stepping on them early and being aggressive towards them and like we just couldn't give them that game. We had to play our game and and the first half we started to slow down and play into their hands. We had to change that. What do you sense is different about the mood, the vibe this year? Because St. Louis Park, you and I had the podcast and you talked about how sometimes they would get tense when they would have big name opponents on the schedule. You're four and two, almost beat Minnetonka, held your own with Cooper, so no real blowout losses, and now you've got wins over Edina, Como Park. This St. Louis Park team, they're sneaking up on people. Yeah, um, I'd say the big thing this year is we have more of our uh, role players stepping into their bigger roles. They kind of hid in the shadows last year a lot, and girls are understanding that it's not just left to be a two-player show. We want it to be all five and all eight, I guess, on the roster as well playing. And you and I had a little bit of fun with this back in the fall about getting implored to step it up, to embrace your inner talent. Salama Her was one of them who told me, I caught up with her at halftime, and she said, yeah, I was one of those people that was getting on Chantel to help her embrace her talents and her capabilities. How do you think that's manifesting this year? Um, I just think I broke out of my shell. I haven't slowed down really. I've had some up and downs, but I've stayed pretty consistent so far. And I think within that, it's just being overall confident in myself and not playing into like my teammates hands, just like making sure I still go out and get mine. Are you going to have any words for Salam when you get back? I know she was here to say hi to everybody. 
Yeah, yeah. She. It's always great to see her. It's always great. I know she's doing really good at Smith, so it's really. I'm really proud of her. So. Well, on your end too, coming out of your shell, we joked about you not being able to break 30. Yeah. You've done that three times. Career high 38. How long before you get to 40? Hopefully next Tuesday. Hopefully next Tuesday. How exciting, though, is it? Again, you talked about the process of coming out of your shell, and now that you have to reap all the benefits that have come with it with the double-doubles last year, three 30-point games this year, what does that say about your growth, and what can other players take from your example? Um, I'd say it just goes back to the confidence thing. Like, when you're in the gym and you're working on those moves, don't be afraid to use them in the game, even if it's, it turns over and stuff. Just, like, keeping strong and aggressive, I think that's been the big turning point. Like. I'm actually using the stuff I'm working on in the gym. And what do you think your performance this year says about resilience and pushing forward? Because your talents were without question. We knew you could play, but here you are. You're in the top 10 in scoring. You've got 1,000 points out of the way. And your ascendance reminds me of someone like Andrea Adams or other players who had all the tools and then just took off. What do you think the successes you're experiencing now says about your journey and how that affirms this passion of yours? Um, I'd say, like you kind of said, just being resilient, staying on top of it, and getting in the gym and working hard on those stuff. Like, it really does pay off, and I feel like within that, what it says about my talents is, like, you can tell. You can see, like, I'm not just stepping out on the court every day. Like, I'm one of those players that I'm going to stay in the gym late. I might get there early, like, all that. And it, it shows up in the game. What you practice is how you play. And I don't know if they keep track of putbacks, but it felt like you had a career high in those two. What do you think has made you versatile in terms of scoring and rebounding? Um, I mean, I'd say my height does help. I don't really play like a big man, but I'm out there like a big man. Um, just being strong and reading the ball. I read the ball off the backboard. I try to read that well, and that's how I think I get a lot of putbacks. I'm, I'm pretty good at seeing where the ball is going to come off the backboard. So now that you've got 1,000 points out of the way, uh, how soon before you cross 2,000? <sighs> well, it probably will be a little while, but we, we'll hope to see it someday. Well, no matter what your point total is, uh, I hope you appreciate and are proud of this accomplishment. I think it says a lot about all the work you've put in and all of the feedback you've taken from your teammates and your coaches. I think it speaks to the sponge that you are when it comes to learning new things and growing your game. And I hope you celebrate tonight because you deserve it. Yes, I will. I plan on doing just that. I'm overjoyed, like I said. Overdo it? Uh, you know what? You deserve that, too. Yeah. Before you go, you want to say hi to anybody? Um, hi, Mom. Hi, Dad. Yeah, we'll, we'll leave it like that. I suppose you already said hi to Salam, right? Yeah, I did say hi to Salam. I'll probably text her, too, when we get out there. So we'll be good. Well, hi, Mom. Hi, Dad. And I hope uh, you enjoy a proud moment in this young woman's career. Chantel, thanks for stopping by. Congrats on the double milestones. And you weren't kidding. You said you were going to save me a few points, and I root for everybody, but uh, you were not messing around. Yeah. I hope you didn't use them all up tonight because you got to come back here Tuesday. Don't worry, I didn't. <laughs> well, no matter how many points she scores, it was an honor to document an historic moment in her career. Thanks again, Chantel. Yes, thank you. And that does it from the Rumble on the River at Minnehaha Academy. For Alex Nagel and the rest of the crew, I'm Mike Beaton. Thanks for watching.